All members are present. We'll go around the room. Joe Boppin, Wisconsin Baptist City Times. Gerald Schumann, Water Light. Adam Bridges, Water Light. Greg Alderman. Mayor Zach Grulink. Paul Schmilski. Tim Sarcy. Adam Pagan. Terry Dolan, Alderman. Joe Lazarusli. Agenda item number two, review and consider a, a request from the Waterworks and Lighting Commission for approval to apply to the Wisconsin DNR for Safe Drinking Water Loan Program financial assistance. See attached application and agreement. So for any of you that haven't heard, this is essentially a principal forgiveness loan from the DNR. The city has been approved up to $300,000 to help the residents pay for their water services. Well, most people don't know where the water utility actually only, pay, only owns the water service up to the curb valve, which is near the sidewalk right away. After that, it's the homeowner's responsibility. The DNR is in a big push to eliminate all lead services. However, we can't, as a water utility, go in and replace the private side. So this money is actually only for the private lead services. What it is, is it's going to be administered by the utility to the owners, and it's going to help them partially get reimbursed for the cost of the service. Now, there's only certain areas of town that the DNR has approved um, for the sites. They're based on where the high concentration of lead services are located within the city. And have any of you aldermen seen the um, sites? Let me give them to you. There's three packets here. Three different zones within the city. Unfortunately, if you fall outside one of those zones, you are not going to be able to get credit for your lead service replacement. Or just there's the blue or the red? The blue is going to be the areas that the lead services get credited. Now we have generated a list of three plumbers or contractors that can do the work. Out of those three, it is Powell Plumbing, Aaron and G, and then um, it's a joint venture between Precision Grading and Coles Plumbing. Those are the only three that reply to our RFP we put in the newspaper. According to the DNR, those are the only three now that can do the work um, for the homeowners. If a homeowner elects to use somebody else, they will not be allowed for credit. Now this resolution that needs to be signed by, I think, the mayor and the clerk. Um, Zach, do you have that paperwork from them? Um, if that is not signed essentially by this <coughs> meeting, I don't think we'll be able to close by the June 28th date. Should we have it? Um, when do you need it by? When do I need it by? The, the executed resolution. Hopefully at this meeting today. I mean, I can print one after this meeting. If they yeah, will. yeah, that's fine. I just put a draft watermark on the one we had. So. Yeah, the, the DNR has about nine municipalities left that need to close by June 28th. Um, getting it done at this meeting won't push us for that deadline, but I believe if we don't have it signed by this meeting. Sure. Yeah, uh, after council executes on it tonight at their full meeting. Yep. I think we have the resolution. Yeah, that's, yeah. Okay. I mean, I've seen it. Yeah, I, I have it. it. It's ready to be executed. So are there any questions, concerns? I know Tim, you had brought up a concern about mm -hmm. the single action. Yeah. Um, the DNR had answered all your questions, yep. I believe. Jeff forwarded you the responses. Yeah, and I was going to forward that on our auditors to make sure they sign off on it. Because we will be having a single audit in 2017, so I just wanted to make sure that okay. we yep. follow all those. It's not a problem. Looks like we're good to go. Okay. This is the this isn't the only area that's got lead pipe. No, 
There's going to be residents that have lead pipe outside that area. It's essentially, the DNR said there's a lot of historical and archaeological sites within the city that you're going to get um, denied excavation permit approvals. So they said, let's try to concentrate on the areas that have the most lead. And so we generated areas based on our records at the utility, and that's what we supplied to them. Um, I've already received <coughs> calls from residents outside the area, and unfortunately, at this point, we can't address that. Um, if there's future money coming down the line in upcoming years, we'll try to add additional areas. But right now, we're just trying to isolate the concentrated areas and try to help out the homeowners as much as possible. About the replacement, <coughs> what um, what uh, cuts will be happening in the street right of way? Hopefully not. Okay. Most of the curb belts are located at the sidewalk. Yeah. What I could see is some of the homeowners having to pay to have the sidewalk replaced. Sure. Um, sometimes they can slide that lead service out and pull a new one in. Okay. Sometimes they have to do an open cut, but they'll usually have to excavate at the curb belt mm -hmm. and then at the foundation at least. So you may lose some sidewalks, but that'll be the homeowner's responsibility to uh, replace. And it hopefully, I suspected that was the case. Yeah. Clarify that. It'll obviously be less money if the plumber is allowed to pull that service through. But if it's tangled up in roads and stuff, usually they still have to do open cut. Yeah. Makes sense. It's still a land of homeowners choice to do this or it is and right. some municipalities have actually changed ordinances to force the homeowners to do this at their cost um, Madison's done that Green Bay's in the process of doing it um, we didn't want to step down that road at this point uh, the EPA may force us eventually um, that 300,000 we put a an estimated number of hopefully 150 services that people would apply for which gave us that $2,000 maximum cost for reimbursement. You know, we could have more, we could have less, and that, that I wouldn't say that $2,000 max is set in stone, because if we don't reach that 150 services, we're going to credit more, because we do have three years to use up this money. So hopefully we can reach our 150 services replaced within three years. And if we don't, then what we're going to do is end up crediting more than that $2,000 back to the original homeowners that approved the uh, program. So in, in these new sections, there, there is a total of 157 or there's more? Well, we don't know, honestly. Oh. It's, we estimate that hopefully there's going to be 150 oh, oh. applicants oh, that apply for it. Okay. There's going to be a lot of people that just don't have the income to be able to you know, some of the estimates I've heard are five thousand dollars to replace the water supplies. Some are three if they can pull that service through. So it's kind of a case by case scenario. So I think I think there's been some rumors floating around about this, and the homeowners get the idea in their head that this is going to be paid in full, and that's probably not going to be the case. But it is some money that can help them. It's essentially free money from the state. Could you make a motion to approve request from the Water Works and Light Commission for approval to apply to the Wisconsin DNR Safe Drinking Water Loan Program? <coughs> Financial assistance uh, in the amount of up to $300,000. I'll second that. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Up to 300000 That's what it says. Okay. All right, then all in favor? All right. All right. Opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item number three, consider approval of a special events application submitted by Current of Wisconsin Rapids for Beer and Cheese, a downtown block party event to be held on Friday, June 16th in conjunction with Cranberry Blossom Fest. This includes closure of 2nd Street North from Jackson Street to Oak Street, Vending, Holly Rocks Tavern, Bottoms Up Tavern, Whiskey Rapids Saloon, and Jennings Bar. <coughs> Mm -hmm. Joe had questions about 
Steve <coughs> um, just had questions about premises. Right. Okay, what's, I guess what's been requested is to close off 2nd Street and then the, there's four bars in the area that would need to <coughs> request an extent, a temporary extension of their premises in order to allow people to take beer out into um, the closed street. And that would be Jennings, Karen's, uh, Whiskey, Rapids, Rapids, and Holly Rocks. Um, in order to make it work, in addition to, to Second Street, the First Street sidewalk, the, the easterly sidewalk, would also need to be included in the premises descriptions um, in order for people to come out the front of Jennings and Karen's um, and then get around to the to Second Street. Um, we would request that it is just extending the Class B beer license, so that's not mixed drinks, that's not wine, and it has to be in aluminum cans or plastic cups and no glass. Um, and we would ask them to kind of delineate something with the sidewalk in terms of not having people to walk into First Street or <coughs> into the park or whatever and, and concentrated more on Second Street between Jackson and Oak. Um, I think we have requests from the four tavern owners to um, to extend their premises. Um, yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, and just with the change though to add that sidewalk on First Street um, from Jackson to Oak. To, from Jackson to Oak, right. First Street, so, yeah, the, east, the eastern sidewalk on First Street from Jackson to Oak. Okay. So technically we're not suspending the open container because they are extending their their premises to that and, and allowing the consumption of beverages off of their like or onto their Temporary license premises. Are they also going to have vending? Um, and I think that's it, right? Yeah, on the agenda. Well, is Karen's going to be able to participate in this? Did you figure that out? Right. Okay. Yep, so Karen's and was Bonham's not up. involved. Because originally, with with the description of their event where they wanted to go was just Second Street, and in order for Jennings to participate, then they could only use that back entrance. Like they have to close their front entrance, and so now with having that sidewalk, Karen and Jennings can participate, and that's I assume that's kind of just without taking away all of that parking and that right street. street. So then are they, would they have to amend this then, or we can just... No, I think you can it? just say okay. that it's amended to include the First Street South East of the Sidewalk um, from Jackson to Oak. And then we'll, we'll give them something stating what their uh, license is amended to. I guess I mean we just appreciate the opportunity. Our goal for this event was really to highlight the downtown businesses and the beauty of it all, as opposed to, you know, setting up a beer tent and trying to take money away from the bars. We wanted to kind of highlight what they're already doing and reasons why people can go out and have a nice, responsible night, you know, in our beautiful town during Blossom Fest. So that's really our motivation behind this event. Right, I'll make a motion then to approve the special events application submitted by Current of Wisconsin Rapids for beer and cheese at Downtown Block Party for Friday, June 16th in conjunction with Cranberry Blossom Festival with the amendment that the application include First Street South from Jackson Street to Oak Street. The easterly yes. sidewalk. The east, the east sidewalk. sidewalk. Okay. Yeah. Second that. All right, motion and a second. Any further discussion or comments? All in favor? All right. 
No one opposed. Motion carried. Thanks. Thank you. Item number four, review and consideration of a highest and best use analysis for Rapids Mall with Jeff Green partners at a cost not to exceed 35000 Uh, so I, uh, there's been some discussion, obviously, in the community and the city <coughs> level as to uh, what to potentially do with the Rapids Mall. Obviously, um, most people are aware that it is not doing well with the recent announcement of J.C. Penney closing, previous Yonkers closing, there are no longer any anchors. Uh, there's been uh, some various proposals that have been looked at on ways to enhance and um, maybe revitalize the mall, uh, most of which are not um, around just keeping it as it is. Uh, but before the city would necessarily want to get involved, there needs, at least in my opinion and staff's opinion, there needs to be an analysis done on what the potential for that site is. Um, so I did reach out to uh, this particular uh, consultant, mainly because they have worked on several mall projects in, in some similar size regions, some larger regions, but uh, it's kind of one of their sweet spots and what they do. And basically by a highest and best use analysis, what they're gonna do is um, look at uh, some market studies, some leakage analysis uh, around the retail space. So that would help identify uh, where are we losing in the retail space? Where are we winning? Uh, which identifies potential types of users and then identifying uh, kind of what the market would support. So it goes above and beyond just saying, well, we need men's clothing stores, for example. It'll actually look at, based on our population spending habits, that you could support uh, two 5,000 square foot boutique stores. Uh, so it will try and drive, drill down to that level. Uh, and then how could that be incorporated into a mall redevelopment, for example. Uh, in addition to retail, uh, there it would look at uh, hotel needs within the community. Um, there, I, depends who you talk to. Some people think we have more than enough hotel rooms. Others think we don't have enough hotel rooms. But this really would do is take a look at our current <coughs> usage, uh, projected usage, and try and determine whether or not there is a need for additional rooms in the city and the surrounding area. And again, if that is the case that there is a need, how could that be incorporated potentially into a redevelopment? Um, is it a boutique hotel that's appropriate? Is it a you know, a typical sign is it a more of a motel, so it'll kind of analyze and point out some potential users that could be approached to fill that gap as well. And then the third aspect is looking at housing. Obviously, the city did its housing study uh, in last year, which gives you that broad brush uh, type of view. But based on some potential users for the mall, this analysis, so let's say it is redeveloped and a certain amount of retail is there, there's a hotel. Uh, and other users, how best then is there a need for housing there as well? Uh, how can we transform the mall potentially from what it is today into more of a lifestyle center where people can live, they can potentially get services, uh, people can come and stay, and how does that play with all the other development that's happening in the downtown area and the city? Uh, although it does look at the mall more specifically, it does still allow us to analyze, again, what that retail need is, what that hotel need is. So it is possible that from an analysis like this, we may be able to target uh, people for the triangle development, for example, or fill some vacant spaces on A Street. Or you know, So it's not, while it's focused on all the data, is still uh, transportable outside of that particular development. Uh, ultimately, the goal would be that that would uh, help if the city does get involved in any redevelopment to potentially attract a developer or someone who would be interested in taking on a project of this magnitude as well as specific tenants. So uh, overall, I guess that's what we're, that this proposal is looking at doing. Uh, as stated in the agenda, the cost for the project is 35,000. I would recommend it not to exceed cost on that. Uh, we have worked with the uh, contractor to try and bring that cost down. It was initially higher and a little more broad in scope, which seemed excessive. So we've tried to work it down to what we ultimately feel is absolutely necessary. Uh, I have reached out to the CBD 
I mentioned Visitors Bureau to gauge their interest in potentially partnering on this as well, um, specifically probably for the hotel aspect. But when you're looking at retail and hospitality uses as well, obviously that plays into uh, what ultimately they are uh, looking to do. Because obviously, if people are coming here, you want them to spend additional money on top of hotel rooms. Uh, so I'm still working to connect with Laura on that to gauge their interest. My attempt to summarize what is enough to answer any questions. Uh, did you mention where the where we're planning to pull the money from? Uh, I believe it talked about Tim, the likely source for the room tax mm -hmm. fund, which is earmarked for economic development. If, if approved, what's the plan of that? Uh, they feel that once they get the go ahead, they can deliver a product in 60 days. So again, there are some other potential redevelopment projects looking at the site. This is an aggressive enough time frame that those can move forward in parallel without derailing anything we feel. Correct. So, so it is a little sorry. unusual. <laughs> That's a good question. So how can we yeah. say what can go or can't go in there? Yes. Well, ultimately, unless the city is involved either in a private redevelopment or takes a step of trying to acquire the property, we can only ultimately control with the zoning type of thing. Um, however, uh, based on the current ownership, if I'm going to be blunt, uh, they are not exactly involved in the community and there, and there is a somewhat of a desire to see additional or a change in ownership there. And this would potentially help in attracting someone who could actually be a partner with the city. Uh, this type of analysis shows ideally what um, that potential return on investment if someone wanted to get involved. <coughs> that being said, if that owner decides to completely disregard any attempt on either for acquisition or redevelopment of that property, um, a portion of this would be um, maybe not applicable, but again, since it's looking at Wisconsin Rapids and, and large and that market, I think it still is a useful tool because it still gives us an idea on the need for hotel, retail, and even on, to some extent, housing. I would say a couple of things. You, Adam hit, hit on the housing piece, and you know the analysis we did on the housing market um, certainly has been helpful, and, and that's where I think we paired, paired back the original proposal primarily was saying we're not going to duplicate what we've already done in our previous analysis of the housing market. Um, you know, when we when MC Sports nationally went bankrupt, um, that also left a gap in the market again around sporting goods, and I think. Um, based on you know consumer preferences of community members and desires, like when JCPenney leaves, there's going to be another gap. There isn't anybody providing in that in that space, and, and there are retailers expanding in that area, but it's a matter of identifying them and understanding what the market um, looks like. It's not in the you know, large national footprints necessarily, but more of your regional um, providers. So I think. Um, the other big piece of the mall, why I think it makes sense for the city to engage sort of proactively with it is because of the property tax base that it sits on. And if we don't have a, a good understanding of the market, I don't think we're going to ever be able to um, right size the amount of retail space we have in our market. And I, and I think, you know, today we've got, uh, we know we've got an oversupply of retail. We've had an oversupply of retail space because of the vacancy that's been left as a result. But I think identifying specifically where those areas of leakage. The other piece that um, is surprising, I think, what people think about is the Visa, MasterCard, credit card swipe is a big data source for these users. They look at where are people with credit cards in our community spending their money. Um, and there's, there's good analysis and data around that. Um, you know, and so they aggregate it and tell a story in a way that, that we're not able to tell without having that analysis. So I, those are, it's a good question about ownership, but just thought I'd mention those. Yeah, I'll make a motion to uh, the highest and best use analysis for the Raptors Mall with Jeff Green Partners at a cost not to exceed thirty-five thousand dollars. I'll second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number five. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.